All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Laura Nelson, who is just near Boulder in Colorado. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing well, John. How are you? Great, great. And Laura is the VP of Marketing at, uh, at Signpost. And mm -hmm. you are a local business advocate because what we were going to talk about today is sales and marketing for local businesses. So mm -hmm. um, let's get straight into it, Laura, right? If you have a small or local business, there are so many options available to you for marketing that it can be overwhelming from traditional marketing to digital marketing, right? It can be completely overwhelming. So how do you, how do you, decide as a local business what is the best mix for you yeah it is a very overwhelming task especially if uh you're like many local business owners who have a limited budget right you can't just invest in everything there are many choices and so what I recommend for, for all local businesses is first to invest in the things that, you know, are foundational and will pay off. And in that category, I would put something like your Google business profile, right? Making sure that's claimed and optimized and improved to accurately reflect your business online. Beyond that, um, there are a number of ways that you can go with, with software programs, with lead generation programs, both online and offline in your community. I think what's really important for any local business owner is to make sure that um, you're measuring what you do, right? Mm. So this mix of marketing activities, it's going to be different for businesses across industries and across communities. Right. So you can't really improve anything unless you measure it first. So yeah. that right um, recipe dialed in, uh, you know, requires some experimentation and some refinement. Yeah, it is. It is kind of amazing. That you just mentioned there at the very beginning about, you know, your Google business. It is amazing how many businesses still don't utilize. It always seems to be an mm -hmm. afterthought. And, yeah. you know, and businesses will sort of push you towards Yelp or they'll do other things, which is great, but they'll ignore Google, which is the first thing that's really going to come up when somebody starts looking. Yes, absolutely. Like the majority of people are starting their search for a business on Google, right? Um, whether they're looking for a category in their area, um, for instance, I'm working on a remodel. So you know, I'm looking for contractors in my area, right? And starting with that list that Google provides or I'm getting recommendations as well. So if someone mm -hmm. refers me to a specific contractor, I still need to go to Google and find his or her info, right? Figure out um, how to get in touch, figure out what other people are saying on that business before I decide to get in touch. Yeah. And then the other thing is, as we were just touching on there, there's also the uh, I mean, it's very it's very tempting just to go with all the easy new like technology based things because, you know, they're great. They seem simple. You seem like you've got, you know, great reach and targeting. But how much with local business, how much does traditional and oh, say old fashioned uh, yeah. types of marketing, how well do they still work? Because let's face it, we're bombarded on the digital side. Yes, absolutely. I think that offline and traditional methods should still be a part of any local business's mix. And I'll give you a few examples, right? Um, you know, if you're a business that does work out in the field, so I'm thinking of contractors, HVAC, um, you know, roofers, you name it, where you've got a fleet, even if it's just one truck or one van, um, you have an opportunity to brand yourself and to get your business's name out around town. A uh, simple way to do that is with a, you know, an effectively designed truck wrap, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one simple way. You know, other ways are building a referral program. You know, referrals as a concept aren't going away. And if you make it easy for your happy customers to do so, if you give them some perks for doing so, um, they'll be happy to pass along that message. They'll, um, they'll want to help your business. Um, I think some of the more novel ways include getting in, engaged with the community. 
you can sponsor a little league team that's been popular for a long time. But um, you know, thinking about a way that your business can uniquely um, establish itself by you know, hosting a turkey drive in your community, mm -hmm. right? Getting folks together uh, under your kind of umbrella for a greater cause. It just gets the buzz out about your business in a, you know, a different way and helps you kind of market what your business stands for as well. Yeah. So by the time yeah. a homeowner has a need or a customer has a need, then you know, you're one of the choices that they think about. When, yeah. um, when when you do things like that, when you sponsor little league teams or you mm -hmm. do a tur sponsor turkey drives, and th that often leads to earned media, right? Uh, where you can actually get exposure in the media that you don't even have yeah. to pay for, because maybe your local one of your local TV stations will be covering the turkey drive, and they'll say, "Oh, we're like here's the sponsor." So there's great, there's good knock-ons from those as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's looking for ways that they can expand that word of mouth that organic traffic, or as you say, that earned media, right? Mm -hmm. um, what we find is a lot of businesses have to invest in both, you know, earned and paid media. They've yes, got sir. to supplement it through other programs too. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that I just wanted to come back to that you mentioned there was the whole thing of referrals. And I, I would really underline that as well. I remember uh, the first house uh, we, uh, my wife and I bought, uh, and we were referred by our accountant to mm -hmm. uh, to the broker, and the broker had a chart uh, on his wall with every single referral tracked down to where they went and who they went. And anytime, so our accountant, as you said, our accountant got a little you know thank you gift for referring okay. us. Um, later on, we got a little thank you gift for referring somebody else. But he he had this down to a fine art, uh, and he had it all tracked and everything. And I think that's so critical. And I think that's so overlooked by many people. It, it absolutely is. Like you need to get systematic about this. Like the visual you are painting here with this this spider web of relationships is really awesome, right? Um, I love that methodical approach, um, and, and that's what it really takes. Like you have to get systematic about you know identifying where someone came from and you know rewarding them for the referrals too. And the first step of that is designing a program. And, and second step is making sure that your customers know about it. Too, right. Right. Not everyone needs to, you know, get a reward for making mm -hmm. a yeah. referral, but um, they have to know that referrals are important to your business. And that's, you know, what you value too. Yeah. And most people, most people, you're right. Most people just value a simple thank you. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have to be monetary. In fact, let's face it: if you have a good experience with the business, you're kind of excited about it. So when somebody else um, says something or they seem to have the same need, you're like, "Oh, let me refer you to this. This is this is a great one." I mean, people naturally like to do that. But as you say, you, if if the business doesn't, if if the business doesn't really celebrate referrals, if they don't really like inform you how important they are to them, then you can, it's easy to overlook it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, sometimes businesses play a backseat to this or play a reactive role and only respond when a customer's unhappy. And, you know, certainly those cases will come up and then you've got to deflect a negative review online or you've got to go back to a job site or replace a product um, when something didn't work out for that customer. And, you know, those are all best practices and those are all things that happen through the course mm -hmm. of, of business. But why not celebrate that happy customer, right? And why not yep. you know, let them know, especially like right as you finish a job or finish a project, right, that, you know, referrals are really important to you and, and your network is, you know, what drives your business and that, you know, the, that you'll pay it forward down the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, obviously, when when you're working with um, local businesses, I mean, you, as we said at the beginning, you have to make some, you have to make some choices. And, mm -hmm. you know, you may be working with somebody may be totally enamored with Instagram and think, oh, if I'm constantly on Instagram and I'm putting stories up and look at all oh, this is fantastic. But your audience isn't really there. I mean, it's kind of a waste of time. So you have to, I mean, number one, you have to, you know, obviously pick your battles, choose choose the um, the formats that are going to work for you. But then also, I mean, clearly you have to really understand where where your customers are. So, you know, if you're if you're going to put a, your face on a on a on a bus stop, like, and you better make sure that 
your customers like take buses or drive past it. Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad you bring up that Instagram example too, because I hear that a lot, like, oh, we're, we're killing it on Instagram. <laughs> and, you know, we really don't invest in other areas. And there is a risk to that, you know, especially mm -hmm. because you know, Instagram, it's owned by Facebook, now called Meta. It's a third party yeah. platform. And when they change their algorithm, you know, you're, you're beholden to them, right? Yep. Um, things could change for you and your campaigns and your organic reach too. And, you know, if you don't have a backup plan, then this could greatly affect your marketing efforts. You've got to think about it like investing in the market, right? You're not mm -hmm. going to have, you know, 100% holdings in one asset. You're probably going to diversify your risk profile. And so that's what I encourage local business owners to think of too. Yeah, because we can fall into, I mean, people can fall into the shiny new toy or the exciting, maybe, um, you know, maybe for that person, like doing the Instagram stuff is super, super exciting. They enjoy mm -hmm. doing it. It's great, but the ROI isn't really there, but because they've sort of it, the momentum itself or doing it kind of is its own reward that sometimes you got to help temper people's enthusiasm. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, and if it's, you know, fulfilling for the person to to do it, that's great. But that sounds like more of a hobby than mm -hmm. a, an actual marketing strategy and plan. Yeah. Um, so how much nowadays would you say they, for local businesses? I mean, obviously, it depends on the business, but, um, you know, how much of how much is traditional marketing still playing a, a role because i mean you always have these conflicting conflicting opinions and reports and all of that kind of stuff but how how much would you say traditional marketing is still playing a major role i think it still plays a, a role i wouldn't say major and it mm -hmm. really depends on you know what community a business is operating in um, what their target clientele looks like and so, you know, if they're serving a, a certain demographic that is only going to, say, read the newspaper and, you know, get information offline, then, yes, their tactics are, are going to look more traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, however, like a, a majority of the population has moved online and you know, these consumers are used to certain ways of doing things like, you know, getting an Uber ride from an app. Right. Right? like streaming their favorite you know, TV shows and movies. And so they've really pushed local businesses to you know, respond and um, to be online where, where they want to, you know, find someone to work with or to buy from. Um, the other thing too, I think obviously uh, that is important uh, is the personality of the business, because I always find this as well as sometimes, uh, you know, especially in a smaller local business, maybe you'll have somebody who, as we, go back to Instagram, maybe somebody who thinks this is fantastic and starts doing all that, but it doesn't really fit with the personality of the business. Mm. And, and sometimes you often see that you often see these kind of jarring things where a business then suddenly tries to be clever or funny or wacky or something, but it just absolutely grates with their personality. And you're going like, eh, it just doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really important that these campaigns uh, reflect the personality of the business. I'm not against trying something new uh, mm -hmm. or something attention grabbing to you know reach that end customer, but it's really important to think about how that might land too, right? Mm -hmm. And what you know what you're trying to sell. So going back to this contractor example, um, you know I don't expect or I don't necessarily choose to work with a contractor whose message may be too far out into left field, right? This is still a serious process. I'm spending a lot of money. And so I, you know, I expect a certain level of professionalism. Now, there are other types of businesses that may be able to take larger risks, you know, with their messaging and with their channels, and, and that's okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think I think it is important. I mean, I think when you even if your business, if your personality is a very kind of serious and maybe a little staid or whatever, it's OK. You can embrace that and you can make that actually work for you and stand out as a, as a contrast to to others. I mean, it doesn't have, always have to be like one end of the spectrum or the other. Absolutely. Because, you know, think about it. You know, we are looking to buy from and work with people at the end yeah. of the day. Right. There are always substitutes. 
that mm -hmm. could be cheaper um, or easier to obtain. But you know, we want to do business locally in our communities. We want to make the right purchase for us. And at the end of the day, that's got to be fulfilled by a human um, at some point. Yeah. What are some of the uh, the novel or creative ways that you have seen local businesses I mean, do things that maybe was experimental and it worked out or surprised you? Um, you know, I think that I mentioned community events earlier, yeah. like the Turkey Drive, and I don't think that is like particularly novel in itself, but I think I have seen businesses do something like this extraordinarily well, where there has been a lasting halo effect, you know, throughout the weeks and months where um, they're acknowledged for doing something well and, and playing a part in their community and, and stepping outside what they're expected to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So if a, you know, roofing contractor is, is doing something like a Turkey drive, right. Not everyone expects that, you know, to happen, but right. it helps put them on a map in a different way and align their values with, with buyers in a different way um, than a traditional campaign would. Yeah, no, it's it's so true. And if you think about it, that uh, and especially in niches like that, I mean, a roofing contractor, you know, maybe most, I mean, most con consumers or homeowners probably don't you only use them once in a blue moon, right? Right. Um, but you may that one because of the turkey drive, you probably don't pay attention to roofing contractors most of your time, but you mm -hmm. did that day, and that it may stick in your mind. You go, oh yeah, that that's one I should call them. Right, right. And you, you know, maybe you made a connection with the people. Right. And again, like this is a type of project and not all, you know, all local businesses are the same. But if you think about these high touch projects where, um, you know, someone's coming over to your home for a series of days or weeks, um, you want to feel comfortable with the people. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, we, we had some HVAC work done a little while ago here, and it was it, it was that it was a lot to do, to be honest, that the final selection is a lot to do with the personality of the business and how the business uh, that we selected made us feel, how the people interacted, how they were all, all of them were on brand and on. It was quite mm -hmm. amazing, actually. I have to say I was very impressed. Yeah, it's when it's, you know, unexpected and, and a business like that over delivers, that leaves an impression. And then, you know, if you have a neighbor or a friend that has a similar need, probably they're going to be toward the top of your list, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's another, it's a good point that when people think about um, marketing, they, they're they always thinking about like activities and, you know, doing stuff and whether it's online or whether it's mailers or whatever, but they don't realize that a huge part of marketing is just the experience that people have working with you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you, you'll hear that increasingly over the next few months and years, and, and you've probably heard this already, but customer experience has become the next forefront of your marketing plan. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get people in the door, right? Um, you, you've got to have some mechanism to attract your customers. But um, where the experience comes in, you know, especially for these longer sales cycle is, you know, how responsive are you? How yep. good is your communication you know, before they decide to work with you throughout the job and then afterwards, too? Yeah, no, it's it's 100 percent because the uh, the customer experience, as you said, that is the that is the big frontier right now. And mm -hmm. and people have to understand that the customer experience is the first time the person interacts with your brand all the way through to becoming a customer and hopefully referring you and beyond. But the problem is with humans is at any stage of that customer experience, if you have one, maybe less than stellar experience, not even a particularly bad one, but less than stellar experience, that tends to inform your whole experience. It's unfortunate. It's just the way human beings are. It does. And it is unfortunate. I think what is really telling is how a business proceeds from there. Mm -hmm. Mistakes yeah. are going to happen, right? We are all human. But what is that? next step? What is that commitment to the customer look like? How do they communicate? Um, often in the you know field of online reviews, for example, um, I hear mm -hmm. all the time about businesses who respond to their negative reviews in such a way that they attract new customers because of it, right? So yeah. they're doing something right in how they 
respond. And then obviously they have great reviews otherwise, but you're going to get hit with a negative review from time to time. This happens to every business. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, there's just some, and unfortunately it is, again, as I said, human nature, unfortunately is that, you know, people get all worked up and tend to like want, can't wait to get home to fire off this negative review. Whereas you come home feeling, ah, that was fantastic. Yeah, I must give them a review. And then life gets in the way and you forget because you're, yeah. unfortunately the negative tends to be more um, motivating in some ways. Again, human nature, what can you say? <laughs> yeah, if businesses are more proactive about soliciting feedback, they can really head that off. So that's yeah. where a program like Signpost helps businesses get feedback you know, privately or, you know, on Google and that in that way, they're able to, you know, help control the message a little more versus mm -hmm. just waiting for people to leave feedback, you know, when they want to or when they can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, listen, Laura, this has been great. All Laura's information is going to be below this video, just right below here. But before we go, please do tell a little bit more about yourself and Signpost. Sure. Um, I've been working with local businesses for a very long time, mostly in my capacity as a, a capacity as a marketer. Um, the last few years, I've focused in this area of B two B or business to business software, and I currently work at a company called Signpost. We help local businesses of all types um, follow up with their customers, get reviews super important to be found, found online. Um, additionally, we help them communicate with their customers and provide a better experience uh, through online chat, uh, text um, with a live receptionist service and other features. Now, it sounds fantastic. And I, I would agree that um, review programs are hard uh, and don't mm -hmm. let anybody tell you any differently. They're hard. And people often think, oh, it's great. I'll just ask everybody, yeah, oh, do write a review for me. Um, it doesn't work that way. I would highly uh, recommend that you check out Signpost, check out uh, what Laura does, um, because anybody who can help you guide you and, and help you avoid some of the pitfalls. It's always a good thing, especially if you're a small and local business with, with limited, uh, limited budget. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Laura, for today. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.